it's time to kick off our special segment, Quarter Se Quarter Tak, where we bring you earnings expectations from each sector. Today, Rima is joining in to put the spotlight on how the second quarter would have perhaps panned out for IT companies. Uh, let's get the curtain raiser going. Over to you, Rima. Thanks so much for that. So let me start with how the quarter was for the IT stocks and the way the Nifty IT index has outperformed. The Nifty IT index is up 16% in the July to September quarter. And from the beginning of June, it's up close to about 30%, significantly outperforming the benchmark indices. Um, the outperformance was driven by investors increasing their positioning in the sector after two years of earnings downgrade cycle on the hope that the IT sector has bottomed out and is on the cusp of a recovery. Now, IT stocks are trading at a premium to their last five years average. But then remember, so are most of the sectors in the market. Now, the moving on, the question in this quarter's earnings season is, will the numbers match up to the narrative that, you know, in Q2, things are going to be stable and going forward, the earnings growth is going to recover, particularly in FI26. Now, this quarter, we're expecting Q2 earnings to be similar to Q1 or maybe slightly better with the financial services vertical, but more so in North America, recovering. Infi is likely to lead with about a 3% revenue growth on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis. Margins across the board are likely to be stable. One, there is INR depreciation, so that will provide the boost. And also, there is no big impact to wage hike. For TCS, it took place in Q1, but for most of the others, like LTI, Mindtree, Infosys, HCL Tech, Tech Mahindra, the wage hike kicks in only in the subsequent quarter. Managements are likely to continue to sound cautious around discretionary spend. So the key to watch will be, will Infosys go ahead and up the FI25 guidance, which stands at 1% to 3%. Now, there is scope. Considering that in Q1, Infi's revenue growth was 3.6%, and in the current quarter, we're expecting a growth of about 3%. Many brokerages believe that Infi is likely to go ahead and up the guidance. So whether it's Kotak, City, Morgan Stanley, they're all baking in a guidance increase, and this is what the numbers look like. HCL Tech, though, on the other hand, is likely to keep their guidance unchanged. So 3 to 5% on revenues, margins at 18 to 19%, and Wipro, which gives you a quarterly guidance. Um, you know, for Q3, it's likely to be between minus 0.5% to 1.5%. So to round this up, Q2 is likely to be stable, but the question is, will growth accelerate in the second half of the year? Are we poised for a strong FI26? Do margins expand in FI26? as consensus uh, believes, will 2025 budgets show an uptick in spending given that interest rates in the U.S. have, you know, we've already started seeing the rate cutting cycle there, are hiring trends improving. Will earnings recover in the next 12 months? Well, that's the expectation. And the question this time is, will the numbers and narrative meet that? Back to you. All right, Rima, thank you very much. Indeed, that's the question. Will the commentary and real hard numbers meet the surge that we've already seen in stock prices. To talk about this, we have uh, Kavaljeet Saluja, EDN Head of Research at Kotak Institutional Equities, joining in. Actually, Kavaljeet and his team are in the camp that is, in fact, uh, expecting Infosys to go ahead and hike the full-year guidance. Kavaljeet, great to have you on the call this morning. Thanks for joining in. So tell us, you know, I was looking at the Infosys uh, stock price just now, but mm -hmm. while the expectation is on the, the guidance increase, look at the rally. It's tremendous. The stock is up 40%, near 40% from the June lows. So you're also sort of uh, walking in with very tall expectations. The company has to deliver, right? You think, do you think they can? Yeah, I mean, we do actually believe that the numbers uh, would be uh, consistent uh, with uh, where the street expectations are. We do expect uh, increase in their revenue growth guidance to four to 5% from three to 4% uh, right now, or, you know, I mean, uh, as of now. Uh, you know, yeah, of course, the stock has rallied, uh, but the way to look at it, the stock was like terribly undervalued three months back. Now it's getting uh, more in uh, sync with uh, the true, uh, you know, potential of the business here. So yeah, we expect the numbers uh, to meet uh, the expectations uh, which the street has. No, absolutely. I, I take your point. And the, the stocks, I mean, IT sector, emphasis included, they've all been rallying for all other tactical reasons as well, the shift in money, etc. But let's talk about the demand recovery. And I think you're expecting a bit of improvement on margins as well. Is this going to be the real deal, like a durable pickup in spending in key markets like the US? And then what would be a sustained rate of growth that you will pencil in? I think that's a bigger question that people are asking. How much will the street be willing to pay for, let's say, you know, 7-8% growth? Is that the best case scenario on a durable basis? 
Okay. Uh, you know, the, the first question you asked is on demand recovery. I mean, look, right now, the current situation of demand is quite mixed. There is improvement in demand in U.S. financial services, but not so much in Europe. At the same time, there is deterioration in uh, retail vertical. There is deterioration in manufacturing. So the net result would vary across companies, and that's where you'll get divergent growth rates. The critical question is that what happens to calendar year 25 budgets? For now, we are building in a improvement in demand in which we are building in a 7 to 8% growth rate for large companies. For certain mid-tier companies, we are expecting a low to mid-teens revenue growth rate. Uh, the question is that do we have the visibility right now uh, uh, for those numbers? The answer is no. I think that visibility would build as the budgeting exercise gets uh, completed at the beginning of uh, calendar year uh, 25, or rather actually towards the end of this calendar year, uh, I mean, that's where you'll get the visibility for acceleration in demand. But the setup is something uh, which is uh, a little bit uh, encouraging, and that forms the basis of our uh, assumption for FI 2026 as such. Aljit, hi, good morning, uh, and, and good to see you uh, back in the program. It's been a while. Uh, just a quick word uh, on whether these rallies will be uh, transitory or they're going to be durable, I mean, stock rallies across the board. Because, you know, when we speak with IT companies, the biggest uh, talking point has been US, US and AI. Uh, right. But again, there's no there's no clear sense of where, right? Everybody for the last two years has been waiting for a US recession. Now, the last jobs data sh shows that labor market is still strong and they've cut by 50 basis points. Uh, so it's like, you know, uh, you're hanging there without really uh, knowing which way. I, I, I suspect that that commentary will not be very much changed this time. Just your thoughts. No, of course, commentary will not change. Uh, you'll get the normal uh, uh, platitudes and uh, normal commentary, uh, which is that uh, there are some green shoots. Uh, I mean, uh, the U.S. election uncertainty is going to end. Uh, you know, there might be something which might be mentioned on interest rates. But it's, I mean, I don't think anyone will comment on calendar year 25. And then you'll have to contend with the furthers of the December uh, quarter as such. So uh, coming to your uh, you know original question of can, can the rally sustain in the uh, uh, stock prices? The answer is that many of the stocks are trading far, far ahead of the real fundamental underlying value, which is where, uh, you know, if you look at uh, the overall IT sector, it is slim pickings. Yeah, it's not uh, as if uh, this uh, sector is busting with many ideas. It's slim pickings, which is where we have, uh, you know, uh, three or four names that we are pushing in a wide coverage of 16 names. Yeah, I mean, as they say, right, fish where the fish are. Uh, and uh, as you say, not, many, not very many fish here uh, in that sense. Kavalji, uh, since we have you when you're, you, you know, just a broader question on, on, on uh, flows and Kotak, of course, deals with most foreign investors. With what we've been seeing over the last couple of, uh, uh, last four or five days of FII selling, Kavalji, give, give, us, a, give us some color. What is the indication you're uh, sort of getting from clients on the other side? Uh, FIIs, I mean, long only hedge, uh, long only hedge funds. Is there more coming, selling at higher levels? If there, are, if there are bounces, will those be sold? You know, uh, Prashant, I would have loved uh, to give you plenty of insights on that, but the strategy part is covered by my colleague and my boss. <laughs> uh, I think definitely you should ask him this question. <laughs> no, we, we definitely will. But to get back to IT. Uh, I mean, like you said, right, that uh, the stocks are already trading far ahead of uh, fundamentals. Seven to nine percent is the kind of single-digit growth we're still working with. But the market, market can keep doing strange things. Now, uh, number one, if the companies don't come up with uh, sort of very lively commentary, is there a possibility of a, a near-term fall in prices? And more importantly, you said that you're, you know, you're only liking a handful of four to five stocks in an otherwise large universe. So talk about who the outliers could be, because the market's willing to pay top dollar for growth. So maybe not tier one, but tier two, tier three. Uh, what are the businesses uh, you think that could deliver on that expectation? So our uh, uh, framework is a straightforward one. Companies that will directly benefit from at least uh, early signs of demand recovery. The demand recovery in financial services is essentially in capital markets. It is in banks that have been pulled up by regulators, so they're spending a lot on uh, uh, you know, risk and compliance, uh, and the regional banks. Uh, uh, in addition, there are some you know, smaller segments in financial services that are also shown promise. 
The companies that benefit from the current state of demand recovery right now are Infosys, it is uh, LTI Mindtree, Coforge. So these are our uh, top three uh, picks as such. Uh, yeah, so it's a very straightforward uh, you know, exercise at least for us here. And just very quickly, 30 seconds, uh, we didn't mention TCS at all in the conversation. Why are you expecting sluggishness there? Uh, it's a little bit uh, of a I mean, uh, surprise, uh, uh, the demand. Uh, I mean, we're expecting a 1% uh, growth rate, which is fairly uh, muted. Uh, 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 you know, ideally, the company should have uh, benefited a lot uh, given their high financial services uh, exposure. But then I guess, uh, you know, there might be some uh, weakness uh, in uh, Europe. At least that's what our uh, base case is, uh, which is where, uh, you know, you might get numbers which are a little bit sluggish. Mm. Okay. All right. Uh... Uh, Kavalji, thank you very much uh, for that. So uh, appreciate you joining in, and uh, you know, hope to speak with you post the earnings season.